All right, so it's time to get some imagery out of Maya so that we can show people what we've actually been making. So here's my model. Yeah, it's just a helix, but we'll pretend it's something cool. So I want to make sure that I am nice and centered up here because I am going to make a turntable. And my turntable is going to go around my object, or the selected object, as it may be. And this is essentially just a camera on a circular track. So it depends where I am in perspective view as to where that turntable will occur. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure I'm all centered up here, looking good, straight on. And I want to go to animation. So to create this turntable, I'm going to go to visualize and you'll see create turntable. Beautiful. Now remember, we have our timeline set to 24 frames a second. So I have 120 here, so that's five seconds. Again, think on increments of 24, and you can see what your what the speed is that you like. I'm gonna go ahead and create my turntable. Now it's fussing, why is it fussing? It is fussing because it wants to know, well, where do you create your turntable around? Because it's not psychic, so I gotta click on my object and say, okay, turntable. Now it's nice and happy. So we're gonna see, so it will go around for 120 frames, it simply just goes 360 degrees. Now, my timeline is 200 frames, so if I go all the way out to 200, oop, no, yeah, there we go. You'll notice that it just stays static, so it's gonna go all the way to 120, and it will stop. So whatever it is, again, it goes 360 and then stops. So that's the nature of it. You'll notice that you have your turntable camera active, so it's no longer the perspective camera, it is the turntable camera. If you don't like what it looks like, you got the wrong angle, or you weren't zoomed in, or zoomed in too much, or whatever, just go up to your, at, your um, outliner under Windows, outliner, and in your outliner you'll see it as a group right here. So you can always click on that and hit delete, it will go away, you can make it again. So you're not stuck with what you've got. Once you have your turntable, then you want to output a nice little play blast. So the play blast is just a simple video. It's what you see is what you get right here, uh, which means I want to turn off my grid. So that way that looks a little cleaner. And if you have something selected or you're showing your bones and joints and whatever, that's going to show up. So you want to make it look as clean as possible. You can even round it out if you want to. And I'm going to go up to Windows, Play Blast. So the thing about the Play Blast, right, is that it's showing you what you're looking at versus a full render, which is taking into account lights, any dynamics, and, um, you know, all the refraction and reflection and all this other crazy stuff, right, to give it the full cinematic look. But since we're not playing with that stuff, we're going to just do a Play Blast. I'm going to go in the option box here. And I want to make sure I'm doing start and end, not the full time slider, else it'll just stay there. So I'm going to do my end time as 120, because I chose to do 120 frames in my turntable. So it'll exactly be my turntable. I'm going to click off ornaments, and I'm going to do an AVI. I'm going to choose highest quality possible, because again, this isn't naturally very high quality, so I want to get what I can out of it. I'm going to go ahead and do 100% scale, so it's full size. And I definitely want to save to file here. So I'm going to do Helix Play Blast and browse. Oh, see, I should have waited into my folder. Now, it should be set with your project, right? I'll just sort of images here. Um, Helix Play Blast, save. Yes. And I'm just overwriting a previous attempt. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and Play Blast this thing. And it will go and there we are. And it should open up a movie for you. Very nice. Yes, yes. So there we go. Now you'll notice that you know the edges are funky. There's no aliasing, anti-aliasing rather. Um, you know, there's some banding on the highlights, but you know, still nice, still shows off what we've got. So that's a way to make a play blast. Now, to do a little bit higher quality rendering, what we can do is go into render. Again, play blast is fine, um, but just 
for those interested. We're going to go ahead and look at our render settings. You can also get to it uh, in the little gearbox here by the hypershade. And I'm going to make sure I have my defaults. So Maya software is what I want to use. I'll go ahead and highest quality. And I want to make an AVI. Oops. And I'm going to call it Helix. Render. All right. And again, I want my end frame to be 120, which is the length of my turntable. And I do not want to do perspective. I want to make sure it's on my turntable camera, right? So I actually get that beautiful spin. Um, it's going to save an alpha channel here. You can turn that off, but the alpha channel can be used later to mask out the black that we're going to end up seeing it put on. Go ahead and do 720. Why not? Be a little fancy. All right, that looks pretty good. All that stuff. Ba -doop -ba -doop. Now, this has enabled default light, and we do want to do that. We do not have any lights in our scene, and if we don't have the default light on, it will be black. So that is not good. So we're going to use that default light. So I want to go to render and batch render. And really, it doesn't have a lot of choices. It's just like, there you go. So I'm going to batch render and close. I'm just going to think about it for a while. When I'm doing a render, a lot of times I test render just a, frame, a couple frames just to see. Now this is rendering like a champ, right? Because it's a really simple shape, really simple shading, no lighting, whatever. But when you have a full scene, it's always good to render just a bit of it before you do the whole thing, just to make sure it looks right. That way you're not stuck waiting an hour and then it's not right. And then you have to go back and do it. It's better to wait five minutes to check it. Um, but again, this is very straightforward. You can watch it do each frame. Wee hee, each frame, there it goes. <sighs> wow, rendering completed. There we are. So if I go into my project here, so documents, my projects, default, and I believe I saved it on all. There we go. All right, so we've got the play blast, and I've got my render. Now you notice some differences here. Ooh, that is shiny. Mm. So that looks better. Uh, my smooth shade is off, right? And the whole thing is on black because I'm using the default lights. Um, there's no lighting in the scene. But that is pretty. That is just, mm, look at that shine. Pew. All right. So that gives you a higher quality version. So two options there. And then I want to make sure I'm saving a front and a side view. So I'm just going to front, get this situated. Come here, come here little guy. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and, let's go ahead and render. I'm just gonna hit that little eyeball. And there we go, there's a front view. Um, yeah. You can always change your render settings if you want. Uh, it'll bring up the box. And I'm just going to save image as front helix. And I'm going to use TIFF. JPEG's fine. TIFF's just, you know, generally higher quality. Mm. And close that out and go into my side view here. Get that situated. Do, do, do. Uh, I'll just go ahead and hit the second one. Just to That opens up the render view. This actually renders the frame. There we go. I'll hit that. All right. Pretty, pretty. And save image. Save it as a TIFF. Side helix. Save. All right, so I should have a movie. Now I have a, you know, again, either one's fine. And then I've got a front and a side. Now the one thing you can do if you want to put your model in a certain spot, I'll go ahead and open this in Photoshop. And 
we saved the alpha channel. So it's not transparent by default, but it has a channel that shows you the transparency. So if you're familiar with Photoshop, um, you can see you've got your red, green, and blue, your RGB, because again, we're working, you know, movies, TV, computers. But I've got this alpha channel here. Aha! You can see that's a selection mask there. So that's my alpha channel. I'm going to select this alpha channel and make a selection based on it. Turn back my RGB and turn it off. So I'm just making the selection from this alpha channel, but I want to make sure RGB is on. If I come back out here and I toss a mask on it, oh, looky there, I have transparency. So this is a way to, you know, if you want to put your character or model in a scene, in a two-dimensional scene in, in Photoshop or what have you, that's an easy way to mask it out, um, put it, you know, somewhere exciting, fun, make it look legit. Um, but that's what that alpha channel checking on was, is it puts that in there, which is very nice. All right, so that's the lowdown on how to do a play blast, a render, and save some images of the fronts and sides of our work. These are things that are really good for portfolio, especially those nice turns. Um, and if you want, you can even render out multiple play blasts if you want to show your finished model, um, your model without texture, your model with the rigging on it, right? You can show different versions of it, edit it together, and you can show progress. Um, that's really good. And it lets people know, you know, hey, you actually did this thing. Um, so it's something to, to think about for the future. So that's why I'm making you guys do this. So that way you have these for uh, your portfolios so you can show off uh, how awesome you are. So, all right. Thank you very much, and I will see you in class.